The hits just keep on coming. Tang Fu versus LGD China. It's going the distance. It's going seconds, to a game remaining. three, and what a way for it to go. Tang Fu made a statement in game one. Remaining. LGD, we deserve your invite. We deserve to be going to the international three. Is and LGD, time? they strike back in game two, and they say, ah, ah, ah. We're the ones who are going to be going there and doing work. And now we go to game three, where all the marbles are going to be on the table. I'm LD of Beyond the Summit. I'm joined here today by Luminous. And we're about to cast yet another group stage game, an awesome one, in the Dota 2 Super League, the $1 million RMB tournament put on by Perfect World. Before I let Lumi talk, I do want to remind everyone, the Western qualifiers Tom pick Foo's up in about 20 pick. minutes. It's going to be Rock's Kiss versus DD. Winner of that is guaranteed to go to Seattle, either as the wildcard team or as the actual team that makes it in as into the main event. So be sure to check out the GD Studio stream as well as Toby's stream. Uh, I think Shiver isn't streaming today, someone said in the chat, but if she is, you can check her stream out too. Twitch.tv slash the GD Studio, no, Twitch.tv slash Toby Wan Dota, or if you want Russian, Twitch.tv slash Starletter1. But anyway, for now, we'll focus on our Asian Dota, the Eastern Qualifiers starting very, very soon. Lumi, it's a speed draft. Walk me through it. Shadow Demon, Darkseer, and Kunkka, what worked? They don't need to change it, so the laning combo is here. Now keep in mind that Tong Fu uh, went for somewhat of a greedier lineup last game, so you might not see Shadow Demon Kunkka on the same mid lane. Uh, it can get punished upon, especially if, for example, Batriders. There, Batrider again being slipped into this draft. I'm really considering going back to my compendium and look over whether Batrider is going to be the most banned hero, because so far, seems like Life Sealer. Uh, is really that hero, or maybe even Gyrocopter to a certain extent. Exactly. And Teammate is going to get a second pick up here. They really need a premium support right now. Rubik could be good. You steal yourself some big boat. Uh, I wonder what's, uh, I guess, Lashrax kind of the more popular support here so far. A Batrider actually gets through the draft. I just can't believe it. This hero it's is like four games in a row, right? Four games in a row, or three games in a row. Yeah, well, we didn't see this hero. Is we just... didn't see it last yeah, game. Yeah, we didn't yeah. see it last game, but. Putting this hero in the hands of either team, LGD or Tong Fu, I just, I don't know. I personally can't really justify it. They're also going to get a clockwork LGD's now. And I mean, I've been talking all day long about breaking the base and securing map control and, you know, the, winning those fights to take the game. And this hero, the Batrider, is the Tong number Fu's one hero to do that to with, ban. more so than anyone else, outside of maybe Magnus. But that's a much more reliable initiation, and he gives you amazing vision, something... Magnus doesn't do with Firefly and then also with Clockwork Rocket. So we'll see. LGD could definitely prove me wrong, but I feel giving this hero away is just so, so dicey, especially after the kind of prowess that Tong Fu exhibited earlier. Laptop died. Lumi's laptop died. He'll be back soon, guys. Don't worry. But, uh, well, with that being said, the draft continues for the time being. I was wondering why he wasn't responding there. LGD's Silencer, he'll be banned out, so LGD going to get rid of a pretty strong support, at least today. I mean, hero that I haven't really seen do much as a support before today. In fact, I think he's won about 10% of the games I've casted where he played support until today, where he was very successful. So, a reasonable ban, and... <sighs> I mean, a hero that just sets up the Batrider for Tom easy initiations. Fuse, we saw that in game one. You use the global silence, you jump in with the lasso, you can yeah. jump in with the hook, and there's no way for LGD to disengage LGD's safely. So I like ban. this pick, uh, or I like this ban rather, and I think it gives them a better shot as we head towards uh, the mid game and the late game. They won't be quite as vulnerable to Tang Fu. Just you press ult, take kill, control map, slightly pull ahead or catch up depending on the state of the game so i think it's a smart ban in that sense alchemist and luna will be the bans for tong fu getting rid of some carries for lgd Tom some strong Fu's pushing heroes and some ban. heroes that can take the game late if need be and let's see where lgd goes from here they've got the kunkka shadow demon last game we saw it as a dual lane option but if you want to try lane kunkka you can run shadow demon kunkka plus one and that's a very strong and viable try lane and even against a hero like anti-mage it can be enough to kill him at the early level so I'm sure Lumi will be back in uh, a couple of minutes. That laptop should be restarting soon. Don't worry, we're not using that laptop for the qualifiers, but preparation's well underway. Gods is actually working right now on some of our last-minute stuff. Very excited for the qualifiers and to show you guys uh, hopefully a fantastic production. Remaining. Speaking of fantastic productions, just got to give a shout-out to uh, Joy Nota and the GD student. I think they've both done an amazing job of stepping things up, and it'll be a wisp that slips through Tom for Fu's LGD. Heo is going to be the choice, or IO. I'm not sure how you say it, but the wisp is the choice for LGD, and something that was banned in the second stage every other game in this series, and both of the first two, it slips through now. But what are they going to combo it with? There is a Chaos Knight available, so there's a Tiny as well. There are definitely... 
heroes that you can pair it with. It's just kind of an interesting pick. I imagine we're looking at an offseer, uh, an offseer, a dark seer off lane seconds, or jungle, remaining. a shadow demon kunk a mid, and then an, a wisp plus one in that safe lane. Five seconds remaining. Problem is going to be that allows Tong Fu, if they'd like, to run a jungle bat rider. Uh, to be pretty greedy in their own right, time. we'll see what they go for here. But being greedy is definitely an option for them in the early game. And uh, Wisp is a hero that can still get just blown up by Anti-Mage, Batrider, Clockwork. Ta LGD, sure, they've got this Wisp, but they're going to have to find the right openings for it. And that could be a little bit trickier. We'll see what they can do, though. Something that was banned, I think, for good reason in the previous two games. It does slip through now, and Tong Fu going to have their work cut out for them to deal with it let's see where we go tong fu now looking at i imagine uh two supports here but it could potentially be Puck. a support clock and it looks like it will be one and i kind of like this Jesus a little bit greedier it'll be the chaos knight it'll be tong slapped or, or snapped up i should say by lgd and a solid well-rounded draft the one thing they have this game that they didn't last game is incredible lockdown with tether as well as chaos bolt and reality rift Anti-Mage is not going to just skate away the way he did last game. There's so much more reliable stun and a lot more physical damage, too, at least through the mid-game. Chaos Knight, a very underrated late-game hero. Not good at farming, but if he gets the farm, can Ten can basically trade remaining. blows with the best of them. Tong Fu, now looking at that final pick, and I Five imagine it will be a support remaining. since we're already looking at a support clockwork. Looks to be... A support clockwork, a, probably a jungle time. bat rider, a puck mid, and I think Tong Fu is just going to abandon that offlane and say, we'll give you your wisp, seconds, but we're going to get a 10 minute blink dagger on our bat rider, and we're going to get a clockwork levels Five and farm seconds, and a free farm remaining. anti mage as a trade. And there's not much you service. can do about it. They'll go for the wind runner here. A strong finish to this draft, I feel, for Tong Fu. And it's often risky to give away levels and farm to a hero like Chaos, or to Wisp, just because you give away a quick level six and then relocate ganks can ruin you, but. Every single hero on Tong Fu is elusive and disruptive in their own way. Between Cogs, Phase Shift, Firefly, Blink, these are not easy heroes to kill. And I think if you're going to give away that Wisp as well as CK, this is what you want in response. So an early Blink Dagger on your Bat Rider in the battle. jungle. Although Kenchai is playing the Clockwork, so I mean, is it a support Bat Rider in a tri lane? Banana City on 100 gold. I'd be very surprised if it is, but you never know. With that being said, just waiting for Lumi to reconnect. But in the meantime, we'll introduce the players. King J. On the clockwork. Sanchain handling the Windrunner. Moo. I'm gonna be taking up the role of the puck here today. Last but not least, in that towards that bottom lane. We'll see Banana now playing that four role. Of course, formerly of four love and made some great plays for that team. He'll be is he going I think he's going jungle, but for the time being, three heroes head towards the bottom lane. Up top we'll have Hal playing the anti mage. Hasn't been pulled at all. But they're hoping they can get a lot accomplished with him. On the side of LGD, we've got Yao playing the Dark Seer. We've got Xiao Wei on the Kunkka, and looks like he'll be headed mid for the time being LGD of free bottom, but I imagine they'll rotate to dual lanes if they don't see an aggressive triple lane from Tang Fu, which I don't think they will. DD on the Shadow Demon, Silar on the Chaos Knight, and last but not least, it's going to be DDC playing the Wisp. I have not seen LGD China run Wisp before, but I'm excited to see what they can do. It's a little bit of Western flavor here for you, and of course, Wisp has become much more common in China and in Asia as of late, but... It's one thing for the hair to be more common. It's another thing for it to be picked in such a high-profile match with a lot begins. of sort of momentum and morale on the line for LGD. Sure, it's only a group stage match for the Dota 2 Super League, but as far as building up their spirits going into the qualifiers, I would say it's a crucial match for them and their shots at advancing, advancing to the International 3. So with that being said, Shao Wei, it's going to get a pretty good creep block off the bat. It'll be landing against a Puck 1v1 and... It's all about, for the Puck in this matchup, you just kind of want to time your phase shift to hopefully dodge a Tidebringer. If you're Xiao Wei, you try and bait it out as much as possible. Mu will eat Tidebringer number one. It's all just going to come down to the animation canceling from Xiao Wei and the patience and timing for Mu. Not the bad. Xiao Wei doing a pretty good job in terms of harassment and farm. They'll get that free farm with bottom lane. There won't really be any sort of punishment from Tang Fu. And... They're running an, uh, an anti-mage that wasn't pulled in the safe lane by himself. This is not going to be the easiest lane for how to farm in. And Banana's just jungling. So LGD exploiting this as well and quick to react. They anticipated the jungle bat. Wisely they did because that's exactly what they're getting. And since it's an offlane clockwork, that's the one thing I'm a little surprised about. He's not going to get a thing out of the lane. I don't think this clockwork's getting any levels or experience. And an underlevel clockwork is something that can die pretty easily to CK Wisp. If you reality rift him at the right moment that you pull them out of the cogs or even just chain set them long enough to bring them down. So 
Normally, offlink clock very hard to kill. This is a mat. This is a lane that can definitely kill him though. Don't count on KJ living if he gets caught out. I think not. For the time being, patience and farming for both teams. Nobody really committed to anything. How is taking a lot of Iron Shield damage? We'll see a rotation from Sang Chang. Trying to drive Yao back, but Yao's already level three, and to drive him back now is very hard. He can pop an Iron Shell himself and even man up if he wants to. Onto our lovely redheaded wind runner in the top lane. Good news for Tongfu, as mentioned, is they're running the jungle bat, and I'm okay with this trade to give a wisp early levels, but you gotta make that bat work. You have to find kills and you look at what LGD have, if Wisp is level 6 by the time the Blink comes out, Relocate could really punish the Blink Dagger. It just comes down to who gets the, fir the few first few fights right, and we'll see what happens. Bottle and Shao 8. Now just sitting back mid, waiting, and a haste turn for Didi. Comes in, could this be our first blood? Disrupts him. But Mu with phase shift should be okay. Oh, he could have gotten the Courier. Little did he know that it was coming out in walking form, and wisely Mu retreats. Oh, very far, but then sends the courier back in, wants to do a little bottle crow. He saw DD rotate back bottom with his observer ward, so he knows it's safe to leave the courier near the tower. Just taking a quick early look at the golden experience grabs. LGD actually coming out ahead, and the main reason is that King J is getting absolutely nothing. This is the weakness of that offlane clock. He can't go into the jungle, and he can't necessarily deal with a tri lane too effectively. He's pretty good against dual lanes, but a triple lane like this can definitely kill him, and not able to really disrupt the creep equilibrium he still has yet to get a creep you compare that to our dark seer yao it's level four so it's just it's night and day really and the good news is they do have this jungle bat rider but overall because this clockwork has been shut down i think it favors tong fu a bit more and i kind of feel like abandoning this lane might have been the better call sure you're giving ck wisp free levels and farm but they're getting it anyway clockwork isn't stopping them and the difference is at least clockwork gets something but we'll see he may get some levels now as the lane pushes in so if he does then i suppose it's a decent trade in the end Shao 8, just continuing to provide some pressure and harassment towards Mu, and actually taking a bit of a closer look at the farm. This is some great farm for, for Silar on the Radiant side. Already 25 and 7. I don't... How many hits has he missed at this point? We're 4 minutes in. That's 8 creeps a wave, and I guess he's... Or a minute, I should say. And I guess he's missed a few creeps, but there's another 4 coming, so... I mean, call it like 3 CS that he's going to have missed with this this 4 minute wave. Uh, Regeneration! Soon to arrive. Actually, I think I'm even doing my math wrong. I think he's even missed less than that. He's barely missing any CS is the point. Sure, Batrider's farming freely in the jungle, but uh, at the same time, you look at what Tongfu have and how is farming quite, quite well in his own right. Left alone to deal with a Darks here with no pooled regen. A very tough matchup handling it quite well. Got a little bit of help from Sang Chang. But Darkseer was already level 4, so it wasn't really a much to help him at that point. And just good individual play to get the early run of health, to stay alive. Oftentimes, if you struggle those first few ways as anti-mage, you can really be driven out of lane. You can require your supports to pull your regen. It's possible Sangshay did give him a set of tangos for some regen. It looks like Lumi has finally managed to reboot, and he should be rejoining me here any moment now. Let's see if I can get a helping hand with this cast, because I'll tell you guys, my voice after those first two games, well, it's hiding in there, but I'd like to keep it fresh for the Eastern Qualifier. So while we're waiting for Lumi, we'll continue taking a look at the middle lane. Shao 8 farming pretty well. Torrent's gonna be deployed, catches a couple of creeps. Mu doing, doing decently as well. This middle lane quite balanced so far, and I, I'm just really concerned about King J. Level one, Lumi, you're back. <laughs> Thank go. you for having me back. Uh, blame gods, don't blame me. That's not, all I gotta say. Not blaming anyone, but good to have you back. And well, a very even game early on. I I don't really like the fact that this clock works level one though. That's my big concern for Tangfu is King J is getting literally nothing. Where you compare that to Darkseer, he's getting a lot. Okay, so I'm trying to keep talking. I'm trying to yeah. look at everything and, yeah, and get take, myself in the back. This get your head back this Wiz TK game. is blowing my mind right now, but uh, I'll keep on you know thinking. And looking. Yeah, top, oh, while, oh. while you're doing that. Top lane, how finds the first blood. So I met, I just got done mentioning how well Darkseer is doing. Now that's going to rubber band back the other way. It's got to be used against the move. Hits level 6. Xiao Wei wants to man fight this because he's got backup lurking at the top rune. Didi has been spotted by a dire ward. And for the time being, they'll back off. That's what Tong Fu needed because, again, they're going to be fighting 4v5 with a level 1 clock. And there's not really an obvious comeback mechanic. Sometimes we'll see teams like Dig. Oh, haste from bottom lane. DDC. Just gonna guard it for Xiao 8. 
We'll see Dignitas around the support clock, but the difference is they pick a hero who can clear Ancients very early, like a Gyrocopter. They stack them, and that's how they catch him up if he doesn't get levels. This game, Anti-Mage can maybe clear Ancients, but it won't be for a much longer, so... I feel like this is a 4v5 game for Tang Fu. Yeah, it seems like a 0-1 start, but I feel like LG is actually quite far ahead. They're dominating the mid lane, or doing doing quite well, and the Pug being kept down in terms of farm. But more importantly, your Wisp is getting some free farm. And with CK is one of the most dangerous laning combo out there. Aside from Anti-Mage, everybody's going to have an absolutely tough time. I guess Cogs could be used for Clockwork himself, but for the most I guess Pug could be okay as well. This lineup uh, from Tongfu drafted is not that bad in terms of surviving that CK West combo. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's something I was talking about earlier, is they're just very elusive, and they also have good abilities to kind of delay the inevitable. Things like Cogs, things like Windrun, that can help keep you alive long enough for the backup to arrive, for the CK stun to wear off. And they're going to get an early Blink Dagger on Banana. He'll be killing a pretty large stack camp. I haven't seen if he's been perfectly efficient, but it seems like he's been fairly efficient anyway in the jungle. And this is going to be a lot of gold going his way. The early Blink Dagger, essential to pick up, because you're giving up free farm and levels to a Wisp. You've got to make a lot happen with this with this Bat Rider to compensate. Have you been watching the lane uh, for Clockwork? Has he not been cogging the creeps? He has been. It just doesn't matter because they're able to pull the wave constantly and they're double pulling. So, cog the creeps, it's irrelevant. They're, they're all being denied to the neutrals regardless. Well, having a level 1 Clockwork is not going to be a, a winning strategy here for LGD. But LGD has, or, or for Tomfu, but Tomfu has come back from worse. Shackle Shot, not really latching on the mid lane. Again, you gotta just wonder, when is the offense really gonna come through? I gotta say, level 6 is coming soon and quick on that Wisp. I was okay with Tong Fu giving this trade. What I kinda was hoping for is to just run a, a Clockwork up top and just do a lot of pulling. And you can also be a bit of a nuisance to the Darkseer. But, and just run the Batrider in the jungle. It's a lot of heroes to share the jungle. They're actually gonna lasso Xiao Wei mid. Now he's in trouble. There's a coil as well. Shackle will latch. Might not need that coil, but they'll drop it anyway. He'll go down. And there's no relocate. Silar TP's in. They don't have the Wisp here yet. Still trying to get level 6. They pull in King J. Level 1. Relocate's gonna come. Not really the best relocate yet. They do get a kill. But they don't get anything else on top of it. And Clockwork was dead anyway. So, first relocate gank. Not super effective. They give him away a level 2 Clockwork. He comes back immediately. In fact... He's level two and a half, and now he's gonna find himself level three on the bot lane. So yeah, relocate also was a Yuso, and that's 150 second cooldown on that ultimate. Not that bad for Tong Fu here, getting a more critical kill on Kunkka. Do it with flair. Yeah, let's see where they go from here. For the time being, King J missiles the creeps down, and <sighs> that first relocate gank doesn't really work. That buys time for Tong Fu to get the levels to farm up the blink dagger on your bat rider, which Banana is getting close to. It's looking like probably an 11, 12 minute blink at the way he's farming middle lane. Just clearing out some wards for the time being. We'll see a rotation from Mu. Mu may be rushing a blink of his own. It seems like they may want to try and rush the double blink. No, he'll buy power tread, so not going to rush it just yet. But I think it's okay for Tang Fu. The trades they're getting, they're actually ahead in terms of golden experience. But, I mean, the main reason I'm okay with it is that that first relocate gank didn't work. That's actually a huge deal. Tang Fu get an extra two minutes where they're not losing towers and they're farming and leveling, which means the next relocate gank, it's going to be harder to find kills. Plus, CK had to TP mid, which means Silar, he's farming well, but he could have been farming even better had he not le left that lane. Yeah, this is not exactly one of those Silar-esque hero where you just farm up and go forward. Kind of you're a safe and late game carry. This is a carry hero that's expected to run around the lane and do a lot of pressure. Windrun is going to get seen here. Pops a Windrun immediately. Relocate is back up. This should be a very, very easy pick off, and that's immediately going to come in. Yep. Well, easy. It was on cooldown, <laughs> so for a moment they had a chance to farm, but it's back up now, and they go right back to work. Lumi, I'm getting a few reports that maybe you need to toggle your Dota TV mic. For anyone that doesn't hear him, though, there is a bug where if a caster disconnects in a game, he ha you have to change audio channels. So select the Chinese casters or just deselect a channel and then come back to us. That should hopefully fix the issue if you are experiencing it. I'm not sure if it was just this one viewer or if other people are, but either way, hopefully that's sorted out for y'all. So do apologize for momentary blip in the audio if indeed there was one but anyway back to the game Lumi. it's a 500 gold lead and change for tang fu they're still up by 1500 gold they have absolute free farm and how who's rushing a battle fury to boot sure lgd has the ck wisp can they continue to find tons of kills that's the question for me 
No, I, I don't think so. Tom Fu is gonna limit the kills. Sure, Wimmer are getting a randomly pick up, but like that's uh, perhaps a, a lack of experience playing against this hero since it's not really often played in the Chinese scene. And again, they have heroes with very good survivability. As this game drags on more and more, these kills are gonna come by harder and harder. So do you look towards LG looking to team fight and relocate a CK Wisp on top of people? Kind of use it as like a, a blink dagger for a CK, for example, and give him a ton of AOE damage in the middle, which is not a bad way, especially when you're doing things like vacuum on top, when you're doing bolts. It's it's a pretty good way to oh, use your wisp. They're going to go right now onto Hal, but can they get a disruption? They need it to get the kill. It is nighttime. I don't think he knows they're going to surge in DD. If the disrupt lands, the torrent will follow it down. He should go. But a double TP reaction. The boat comes in. Relocate is here. What well, could have been a bad dive is suddenly a good one. But CK Wisp arriving. Move. Unable to phase shift that Chaos Bolt. I think he should have been able to get it off there. Now a phase shift, but he goes down anyway. Now Banana lassoing Wisp, but Wisp is going to head back to safety. Looks like they're all low. They may all die. Not actually the case. In comes How. He's rejoined the fight. He's bought back for this. He's delayed his battle fury. He doesn't find a kill. And in the end, the entirety of LGD lives. What a fight. I mean, it's like you said. They 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 send a few heroes into the late, and then they relocate on top of it. And Tang Fu, while they're busy waiting for TP scrolls, relocate is instantly arriving. Yeah, fairly poor miscommunication by Tom Fu. They don't actually focus down on anybody. Drums is going to be used. They want to get an extra kill. And Kunka is just leading a charge. King Jay is going south. He's going to get relocated. Now goes up forward. Nice cogs, though. That should be able to disengage everything. That was so damn close for King Jay. Too close for comfort. But I feel like the lack of a really good single target lockdown spell and basically says, all right, everybody, let's collapse on this guy and quick kill. Without that for Tom Fu, they're not going to get too much done. The flaming lasso came a little bit too late. It came towards the end of the relocate, and Wisp just went back very safely. So I like Tom Fu trying to kill Wisp. They just got to do it as soon as possible. They got to do it a lot sooner than what they did in the last team fight. Meanwhile, they've got the drums up on Silar, getting the next items for him. Obviously, this game. I mean, you really do need a BKB. Sure, there's a lasso, there's cogs, but you don't want to be caught in the coil for the duration of a fight. You don't want to get shackle shotted. So I imagine Siler will go for that early. Maybe he gets an armlet first. I guess you don't have to get a BKB, but I would like to see one. We'll see a teleport top of Shaoi, but a beautiful ward from Tanku will spot out the rotation. They don't want how to continue to die. And with this ward, they should be able to keep him safe. Top tower. Well, they have their own ward behind the tower. They know the anti-mage is somewhere still in that in that jungle on the top in the vicinity. Rocket gonna fly through to slow down this one push. They're being extremely aggressive, and I gotta say, this smoke is got is expected. Uh, you know, they, they saw them walk in the jungle. Now everybody is disappeared. That's gonna allow them to drop a deep ward, and that deep ward is key for the relocate a little bit later on. Here comes potentially a bit of a gank set up by Tang Fu. KJ's only level 4. We're 14 minutes in. That's so bad to have a level 4 clockwork. Not that he's a bad player or doing poorly, but it just really hurts their team is what I'm trying to say. Clockwork, oh boy, he might be able to find some good cogs here, even though he's level 4. Can still have an impact with those. Siler gets shackled to a relocate. tree. Is he going to go down? He will before the relocate can send him back. DDC, well, taking some poison is going to go down in the end. Oh my goodness. That was just not what the doctor ordered for the CK, and they didn't have their full complement of heroes. Yao, with a mech getting close to completion, was not there. Actually, I say close to completion, it's a little bit farther off than I thought. We're that was actually one of the most amazing bad rider play I've seen in a while. Blink Lasso initiation on CK, that's expected. He held on to his flame break for the longest time, because you know that the Wisp will try to relocate CK out into the safety. But uh, when you cast Flame Break or any type of stun during the relocate, you could cancel it. And that's exactly what happened. So uh, DDC got bounced around by the Flame Break, relocate backed out, and they got the CK kill. If you did it any other way, CK would have survived. So well played by Banana. Great patience. Yeah, and I mean, DDC also got pushed out of the tether range too. So that didn't help Silar at all. Silar, well, he's got this Ogre Club. He'll be rushing the BKB, I do imagine. And it's a big item for them. LGD haven't really felt the full threat of these two. They could relocate on Banana. That's what they're thinking about right now, but... CD, though. Yeah, cool down. Oh, yeah. Because he used it last fight and he got canceled. They want to yeah. go, but it's going to be too late, probably, by the time they can. And Observer War Bottom going to spot out the rotation. It's really the key thing versus CK Wisp is seeing where they are and knowing when they're going to come, Lumi. And got to credit Tongfu. Looking at the map vision right now, they see a lot. And, but they can't really get it, right? They see Banana, but even if they see him, or they, they saw him momentarily, Blink Dagger will basically mean that you cannot gank on him anymore. Two seconds is way more than enough time for him to react. 
Oh yeah. So I, I actually meant I actually meant LGD uh, or Tongfu, who have great vision of the CK Wisp. But Dyer's you're exactly right. LGD need fire. vision and they have it as well. But like you said, I don't think they can get the kill. So both teams with the good vision and well, they'll get a tier one top. Attack. And Tongfu can't really contest this simply because they're worried about relocate. Dyer's Meanwhile, the relocate man is going on Sang Chen. Can they pull him in? DDC comes by himself. Where is that Chaos Knight? Not brought along for the ride. Now DDC caught in a horrible position, cogged in and brought down fast. And now Tong Fu trying to back off. They've got a last one, Banana. He'll play break him back. He'll drop them fairly low. Silo wants to come in. He's going to go on Banana without his trusty Wisp. But in the end, they will back off. Man, they needed the Wisp there. If they did, that's a great fight for them. We're seeing a lot of these mistakes that generally Chinese teams don't make, and that just shows the ex inexperience of playing this hero. Like, CK Wisp, or Wisp in general, is one of the more difficult heroes to play. Not only do you have to play that hero very well, your teammate have to know how to play with the Wisp. For example, CK Wisp out of tether range. That's kind of a novice mistake that you don't see too often in these pro games, but it happens, and it's very understandable. Yeah, for the time being, it just it doesn't feel like the CK Wisp has been super effective, and it's I think it's... You know, it's also, how much has LDD actually run this hero in official matches? I have not seen them run CK Wisp before. Maybe This they is have, the first time, yeah, I think for it's me. their first official match anyway. Sure, maybe they've been scrimming with it, but you compare that to a team like Alliance or Liquid or any of the Western teams that run Wisp, and that's a very unique hero. It's something you really want to practice with. They run it constantly, and that makes it a lot easier to execute it properly. Yeah, and here's the thing. They have with multiple relocates so far. I mean, there was a great one that went up top, and of course a great one that got a kill on Woodrunner. But since then, they've kind of been whiffing these relocate ganks. And unlike a line, for example, unlike a Lina, who could, or a Shrek, for example, that could gank or tower push when their ultimate's down, a Wisp without the ultimate is actually just a glorified range creep sitting in lane doing nothing. So these relocate have to be on key because you're losing a ton of time by not getting off. Relocate's back up. And let's see if they're going to be looking for something else. For the time being, just can't seem to get enraged anyone. And, well, they're still farming on Tong Fu. We see our anti-mage for how happily farming away top. It's not going to be the fastest battle fury, but he gets it at 18 minutes, which is quite decent, all things considered. Puck able to escape middle lane. And for Tong Fu now, they'll look to try and hold on to mid as best they can. But with the threat of relocate here, they'll actually relocate into the jungle. They find Silar. Can they blow him up? Oh, yes. They can. Excuse me, not Silar. How? Tyler finds how I meant to say, and now they'll go on to a fight towards the tier 2 mid. Boat comes in, hits nothing, completely airballed. Now Sangchain dropped, well, sort of back into the fight, but Tyler's the one in a bit of trouble. Maybe not. There's your hook from King J. Finally hits level 6, just at 19 minutes in, barely able to secure it. That's not going to be enough. They get away, they get the kill in how, and then they get out. That's exactly what the doctor ordered for LG, LGD. I wonder if Anti Mage uses Blink towards that camp. Uh, if that's the case, then that was a great relocate. If not, then anti mage reaction to jump away from that relocate was a little bit too slow. Batrider going to blink away, and that's going to be uh, tier 1 free tower for LGD. But these wards basically means that if they have good coverage of their enemy jungle, as well as perhaps their own jungle, that means anti mage can't actually blink around farm because of the threat of the relocate. That's actually a pretty big deal against anti mage. Yeah, he's having trouble farming this game and hasn't actually taken... That many points at stats. It looks like only one has been taken by House so far, which frankly isn't really enough against Relocate. You need more HP to deal with this. We may even see him rush something like a Vitality Booster, I feel, just to tank up a bit. And even then, you could still be brought down. So I would say things still looking pretty good for LGD. It hasn't been the most flawless uh, or the f most flawless execution of a Wisp CK combo, but. Even when you're not finding kills with these two, it's just the threat of the relocate that really disrupts the flow of the game for the enemy team. Yeah, you talked about having sight on the Wisp PK is important because that they're staying very far back. Um, this is where you kind of uh, stage a game where you farm neutrals in your own jungle and go for these safe ganks. But entire party smoked up here for Tom Fu. They're looking for a pickoff, and if they don't find one, they're going to transition into that tier 1 tower push. And this is a very dangerous thing because you can have two people, three people teleporting that tier 1, glyph that tier 1, and relocate back in. Here's the issue there is, there's no glyph available, so this tier 1 should go down eventually. Moose chipping away at the tower with a double damage rune, but in's going to come Yao. He's got a mech soon, shall we? Looking at. Uh, Shadow Blade, but it will be too late. Moo gets the tower. Now they just got to back off, and it looks like they'll get away in time. Silar and DDC gonna rotate maybe towards the bottom lane. No, not just yet. DD gonna make a foray through his own jungle, and 
Well, for the time being, LGD China, they're not ganking, but Tong Fu have the skit, uh, basically have the fear of God put into them, and uh, Tong Fu are not really farming that much right now. Yeah, a lot of people think that, oh, I have Wisp, I have to gank, I have to gank, and if I don't get my gank successfully off, then my Wisp is not really being a useful hero. It's kind of, half of it's what you said, the, the threat of ganks, make sure that the enemy is not farming as freely as possible, the anti-mage can blink as freely, uh, the ally heroes on Tong Fu side have to stay together, the sharing EXP, the sharing farm. The other big thing is that Wisp allows your CK to farm in your jungle and still join every fight, so it, it's a twofold in terms of Dying extending your farm, down and slowing down the enemy's farm. It's pretty nice here for, for a whistle. Silar's gonna, see it. He's gonna throw out his Phantasm yeah. and go to work on the tower. So he drops it early, won't have it later on, but these are, oh, relocate, relocate towards the middle lane. How blinks away, but gets pulled back in to an X and down will go. King J hooks in to his own demise, an easy double kill for Xiao Aid. And they can go right back bottom and look to fight this. They're gonna come back in in a matter of seconds. Oh boy, I don't think Tang Fu is ready for this. Showing a little bit of inexperience against this combo, perhaps Silar. Not blow at all, but DDC the one in trouble. Looks like in the end they won't find any additional kills, but I mean for Tong Fu, just it seems like they're just not prepared for the relocates. Yeah, generally and what you want to do there if you have buyback on heroes is that alright, we got jumped on mid, but since they teleported, they relocated away right in front of our tier one. You should be camping there with four or five heroes and at least punish them on the relocate backwards. That didn't happen. They didn't have enough burst damage to kill the Wisp. Wisp survival like Dyer's red HP. But attack. that's something you gotta make sure that Silar dies a couple more times because he's gonna go close to the BKB. And once you have a BKB CK with Wisp back up, I just think it's so hard to actually kill this hero. Especially with Anti-Mage not getting the physical damage output he needs. Yeah, how hasn't been farming particularly well. He's actually almost 900 gold behind Xiao Aid and they are up one tower right now for LGD, but that's it. That's not a big tower lead at all. This is just farm, really, and as well as kill participation. We're looking at a 2, 1, and 2 Kunkka, and a 1, 3, and 1 Anti-Mage. That's the big difference. The kill scores, the death scores, and the assists. And, I mean, when you have CK Wisp and you have Kunkka, you can take an Anti-Mage late game. I don't yeah. even think LGD's worried about taking it late. Not only taking a late game, this combo is actually pretty sick. You Shadow Blade in with Shadow 8 and you just find whoever you find. It doesn't matter if they have Blink Dagger or Anti-Mage Blink. You just X him. And then the Relocate comes in on top and you're like, Oh wait, I'm gonna die here. There's nothing I can do. And that's exactly what they've been doing on the mid lane. And, and Shadow 8 will just keep looking for these Shadow Blade. It's so safe for him to go in like this. Unless he gets punished by a couple times by an early gem or whatever. Whoever he sees is just flat out dead. Shall wait, Shadow Blade up, looking for somebody to hunt. He's gonna find a disruption, uh, or rather an X into a torrent. It'll come in with the boat onto King J, but no relocate. I think he told his team, let's play it safe. We don't actually need to go here and boat with that very low cooldown. They'll just back off and continue to farm. LGD China looking at a 1500 gold lead, a 1500 experience lead. Shall wait, once an invis bottom, he'll get it. And Mu has just blown his gem for, or not his gem, well, potentially his gem, as he will get, he dodges the X with a phase shift. Well played by him. Otherwise, might have lost that gem, but it, it's just, it feels like they're being constricted, and they're going to have to take a big fight soon, because BKB is up on Silar. Yeah, and, and well, I guess the answer is a, a basher on anti mage, but he's nowhere near. He needs his Manta, he needs his own BKB. And then, and then maybe he needs a heart on top of that. So there's really he, he's basically immortal, Silar, for the longest time. So let's see where LG wants to take this. I, I like them to see. Oh, a little bit of fight going on mid lane here. Bow initiation. They want on Yao, but Yao's not gonna go down. The bow whiff as well. The relocate comes in. A big cluster fight all over the place. Gotta focus on the Wisp. Wisp is gonna be a half HP. The Clockwork Hook comes in as well. They're gonna focus on Silo in the middle, but Silo is just smacking everybody away. DDC's low. He's gonna relocate out safely. And now Silo's on the chase against Banana. He has Blink. He's back out, but it's two to nothing so far. Purge onto Saiyan Chain. Sidelar pulls him down to the low ground and then immediately clubs him to death. Oh my goodness. The flame break there. Almost enough to keep him alive, but not quite in the end. How? It's all stall tactics for him. Relocates down, he'll push top aggressively. Now he'll look to farm some Ancients. He's doing the right thing, but while he's busy doing the right thing, LGD are doing the better thing. They are farming heroes and they're doing it fast. Yeah, at least Hong Fu House steals himself an Ancient stack from the enemy. He can't really ask for too much in kind of this really high pressure game. And of course, Tong Fu is still keeping up their towers. Uh, they're even in terms of tower in a stage where they should be losing in towers. I gotta commend Tong Fu for their uh, excellency, I suppose, but... The pressure will continue because now Darkseer 
has had that mech and a vid boost up for quite a bit now. I'm surprised that Tomfu has, or excuse me, LGD hasn't been looking to aggressively push a bit more because they have better items, in my opinion. Yeah, for the time being. Continue to farm. Yao, sitting on a vitality booster. I just feel like LGD is hasn't quite found that one convincing fight where they just roll over Tongfu. They're finding a kill here or there. They're accumulating small advantages, but they're not completely blowing the game wide open. And part of it's good defensive play from Tongfu. Part of it is, well, those small mistakes. Things like the tether not being there for the relocate gank, relocate gank mid earlier. Uh, Chaos Knight, I think, could have used Phantasm a lot earlier, Silar, in that last fight and probably would have had an extra kill or two to his name, but... All things considered, they're still doing decent. I, I just feel they could be doing more with the combo, and I think it's just the lack of experience running it in official matches that's showing a bit here. Yeah, maybe, it, again, Tom is playing rather well with their elusive hero avoiding fights as well, so there's a little bit of that. Here's almost a slow siege on the bot tier one. It's it's tough for Tom Fu to actually use these bats to initiate. For example, like, normally you see a free jump on the bot lane, pull Xiao A back, and, and try to kill him quick. But that also means that the relocate is going to be jumping on top of you with the spirits. And those spirit bombs, they do a ton of damage. They really want to go bottom right now. They're thinking about a dive. No relocate yet, but you know it could come any second. And it's going to come right now. Who do they catch? It will be Sang Chain pulled back in. Now Chaos bolted four seconds. Why the hell not? An easy kill. And a tier one to follow. I think they can even take a tier two. Silar isn't level 16 yet, but it's coming fairly soon. He'll be left behind by DDC, who also, by the way, got the tower and is tanking up a little bit. And we'll see them probably push this bottom lane. Yeah, once uh, I'm, I'm somewhat sad that DDC wasn't the mech holder, but obviously he's nowhere near rich as Yao. Uh, but in mech plus uh, Wisp was kind of crazy. Top lane, X. Oh, nice blink here by Hal. Oh, Xiao Wei was on the hunt. He just wanted to wait a bit longer for Silo to arrive. But while he's busy doing that, Hal blinks away through the trees to safety and lgd well, anytime that he's blinking he's not farming right? that's so true that's he, he does live but it's the kind of the same result as dying where he's not getting anything bottom lane we'll see king j go onto yao now the lasso if needed is available he'll be pulled up onto a cliff and that's a dead code head man no way out for him king j however dropping low his own right here comes your wisp to join the fight but oh i don't think it's gonna do a whole lot shackle not gonna connect. Meanwhile, anti-mage illusions just being fought with. And immediately, how's gonna go bottom wall? That's happening. It looks like that Windrunner actually overextended, gets picked off. So LGD find a kill, notch it to their belt, and they may look to push a tier two mid off of this. Yeah, she's trying to run away, but a level three X marks the spot. Really long cast range. Was able to pick her off and, and chase with a kill. That's gonna be tier two. Oh no, Xiao A is gonna TP back, uh, back to base. LGD. And the anti-mage gonna be farming away. He's doing all the right things for how He's not getting caught by the relocates. He's constantly pushing the lanes. He's keeping his creep score up. He's farming towards the Manta style. This is exactly what they need from him. It's just a question of, will it be enough? He's doing all the right things, but is his team too far behind? Or can how somehow take it late enough where... Not that they have a guaranteed win late game, but they certainly have a better shot when anti-mage is four or five items. And how? Backing off for a BKB. He's already got the Oak Club. Now he picks up a Mithril Hammer. He won't complete the Manta style. He is just desperate to avoid the Tether uh, as well as Chaos Bolt stuns. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. He's doing all the right thing, but just the threat of enemy forces him to blink in these tree lines and not exactly where he wants to be. He wants to be next to creeps all the time, not within trees. Uh, going back to the BKB, it's, it's a, I guess, a questionable, but, but a, a, a choice that makes sense because X is what kills him right now. You go BKB now out of the X and basically be fine. Keep in mind that he's been doing this against the X Torn relocate combo, which should guarantee a kill anytime, especially when that Shadow Blade's on top. Here comes the entire enemy lineup. And now there's BKB up. They could actually take a decent fight, especially if you get a, a good mana void on the Dark Seer. Here comes Xiao Wei. They're them. looking for Sang Chain. Man, they scattered in a hurry, did they not? Tong Fu able to get away and they dodge a smoke gank, they dodge a bullet. CK Wisp weren't the weren't there but of course they can be there mo well, maybe they didn't dodge that bullet hal's now gonna be disrupted where's that relocate it comes this second can they pull him in in time he's got the bkp they'll ignore him they'll focus banana the boat will finish him off quick hook 
going to catch out a Shadow Demon. However, Chaos Knight is still BKB. Where's the Phantasm from Silar? He just doesn't want to use it yet. Moo still on the run. The Chaos Bolt's going to connect, gets the kill. Gem hits the deck. Silar, Flame Break, no Phantasm. Just doesn't want to use it. I feel it could make a difference in this fight. He gets shackled to a tree. Meanwhile, House giving up the fight, wants to go push top and stall the game. Banana gets just sliced apart. Those crits are strong. Very, very poor focus fire by Tom Fu. I like the Puck idea to try to jump on a Shadow Demon, but it really should be on the Wisp. Dream Core should be on top, anti Mini should be on top. When you remove Wisp from the team fight, CK lacks a ton of damage, simply from not getting overcharge, not getting the movement speed that Tether gives you. He had BKB, so he should be basically fine. I guess one thing he was very worried about is being right next to Silar, because Silar does throw out some big deeps with, with the crits and all that. So. It's a questionable choice. He actually ended up not even getting a kill on Shadow Demon. Try to push tier one top, not getting that either. So despite having a 10 second BKB, the effectiveness of that one wasn't felt. So got to go back to the farming, I think. To be fair, if Hal gets if he eats a crit once, he loses about a third of his health. So yeah, it's a t it's fair. tough for him. If he doesn't get the BKB off, he just dies. And if there's a if there's an army in phantasms, you can die in one volley of clubs, and that's scary. So it's just kind of understandable that. He's afraid to take a fight and lose it, but at the same time, you get BKB to fight. If you don't want to fight, you get a Mantis style, you get Yeah, you don't get the BKB. Yeah. So, also, that Shadow Demon should not be disrupting Anti-Mage anymore. It's basically a free setup for him to pop the BKB whenever he wants, because, you know, you'll press your instant cast BKB a lot sooner than a Torn would come through Xiao Wei. Looking, again, he's just finding these Xs. He sees the one on King J or Banana. Are you actually going to call Re Relocate on top? King J's dead. Oh my goodness, is he ever, but they're going to get two, a delicious additional gift awarded to them by Moo, who's played really well in some of the earlier games, but we'll get picked off now, how on the bottom lane, stalling tactics, beautifully executed stalling tactics, but again, his team continues to lose fights, LGD have now accrued about a 4,000 gold lead, about a 5,000, 6,000 experience lead, they're ahead, it doesn't feel like they've won yet, but this is where it gets really hard. Silar is about to get a Heart of Tarrasque, and let me tell you, Lumi, this is a much better combat item than a BKB on Anti-Mage. You get a Heart on your Chaos Knight, you pop your Phantasm, you don't know what to lasso, you don't necessarily get off a good cog, you can't rely on Shackle anymore, and he can kill your entire team with one or two tethers. Yeah, Heart is probably the best item. Maybe, for example, Sanji and Yasha, maybe a decent considered choice as well. He just needs to tank up now and just run at the enemy team. And there's oh no, not again. It. How is forced? Oh, he's forced to BKB. Otherwise, would have gotten X back to the tower. Yeah, that's that's why he gone straight BKB, not finishing his Manta to get away from situations like those. But hey, that's another BKB charge down the drain. Yeah, I mean, you know, normally you get BKB to fight. I guess you could argue, like you're saying, that, well, it's to dodge the X and it's to kind of live longer, but... It's a very expensive way to dodge it's, that that's X. A, that's nearly a 4,000 gold, <laughs> you know, help you not die a few times item. That's a lot. Well, I guess, you know, to the same token, Weaver gets, you know, Lincoln's fair to not die, and that's a 5k item. It's it's, it's here and there and there, Di but I... Yeah, I, I mean, difference is Weaver isn't normally your one position carry. Right, well, we'll right, see. Right. Moose gonna get caught. Oh, my goodness, look at that stun. Okay, comes in. Just to look for a little bit more kill. They might find themselves a Windrunner. Orbs are going to spot Sang Shane out on the run. Where's that X? Sang Shane gets X. Now Torrent. Oh, man. This is going to hurt. <laughs> is it ever, Lumi? Is it ever? That was one shot, one kill. I, I guess the saving grace for LGD is that they're not really threat or they're not really threatening to Rex at any points. Maybe after this tier 2 and a Roshan kill, they will start to do so. Looks like DDC might be a little bit trouble, but he really isn't. He's gonna find that he close. Oh my goodness! King J, great hope, but he caught blocks, file out of it. But they still get the kill, so very nice. LGD still has Phantasm with a heart. I think they could even go high ground, but they'll back off and really play it safe, so. I don't mind the choice. I, the one thing I dis I, I feel Silar could be doing more of is just using Phantasm. I, I think we've seen him use it twice this game. We're 35 minutes in. He hit level 6 very early. He took Phantasm very early. That's the only thing that I... I mean, I think that's the main thing I would like to see. You can just use Phantasm, push a tower. And some games that can cost you if the enemy team's able to fight really well when your Phantasm's down. But even if your Phantasm's down, I don't think Tang Fu want to fight right now. And I, I feel like it's just... It's arguably one of the best pushing abilities in the game at this point. So. I, I completely agree on that. I guess the only consideration about that is that 
there's a ton of AoE nukes, and if you're not careful about your Phantasm control, they could get blown away, because they do take um, a little bit of extra damage. Uh, so that's something to be worried about. So maybe he's going to be looking to backstab first with the relocate, get a kill, and then Phantasm to wipe the entire base. If LGD wins a team fight right now, or find a two-man pickoff, they get Raxus, because, like you said, Phantasm, huge, huge damage output. They'll go back to farming, and I do feel mm -hmm. it's... I mean, it's it's what we talked about as soon as the Batrider pick came out. It's very hard to actually enter the base versus Tong Fu, especially when they also have Clockworks Cogs, which, sure, he's pretty much food, but Cogs are still going to be a nuisance to a Chaos Knight, even with the BKB. So, for Tong Fu, I wouldn't... It's the same story as Game 1, game one and 2. I wouldn't say the team that's losing is out of it, but I would say it's a hard road from here. I feel that, unlike from Game 1 and Game 2, I feel like the losing team right now, Tong Fu, the, the roles... A lot steeper. They don't have a kind of a ooh, we're gonna farm back and, and win. Anti Mage again has been trying to farm, but if you look at it, the way he's been farming, he's re he's doesn't he can't use blink because he's just he's basically walking around to farm with the battle fairy, which is tough. Like that that's why blink battle blink battle fairy on anti mage is broken because you can farm so quickly. He, he doesn't he can't use blink as a relocate. Here comes a bit of a skirmish around the Roshan pit. Moo's gonna eat an X now. A torrent to follow. Here comes your hook boat on a move. It's gonna catch Moo, bring him down very easily. King J on the run, but how is he gonna get out? Shall we? Finds a huge splash attack and brings down another. King J to fall. That's three out of the fight and on the sidelines, and it's either Roche or it's Rags. Oh my goodness. Anti Mage stood under the Wisp, trying to wait for them to come back to relocate. He didn't even get the kill on the Wisp. So now how farm some Ancient Stack? He, I don't know. This game is. It's not looking good for Tung Fu. It really isn't, yeah. And it's, you know, you get the BKB, but if you get Reality Rifted into a Tether Stun before you pop that BKB, you die from full health. And even if you get it off, you don't man fight the Chaos Knight when he's got three or four illusions. Uh, or not four, three illusions, four total sources of damage, I should say. Right, so in the previous two games when the ta teams are behind, they had a Magnus, right? And it looks like a fight breaks out here. They're going to focus on DD. DD might be the one person they can kill, but not if Xiao A comes through. They are going to get the DD. Kill. Gem is on the ground, so they get a get a free. Oh, how he there. gets pulled into reality rift. Can they bring him down in time? There's your phantasm. It's a bit late to the party. Ooh. Once again, blows up that EO. Now Silar pushed back by the cogs. Roshan is still alive. He'll kill off an illusion and just a few swipes of that ugly, ugly sickle. But uh, hello. I don't know, Lumi. That was a, again. I feel late on the phantasm. Would have been a kill if he'd gotten it off right away. Yeah, those cogs doing a very good job in terms of pushing back at the end. Roshan is actually fairly low. Wisp is dead. And Wall is going to be down for a couple seconds. Darkseer is not nowhere near. I think this is a very good opportunity for Tom to at least force something. If they could sneak a Roshan right here. Clockwork hooked in this shit. Dream Cold is going to be on too. Defensive disruption for uh, in the cost right now. And well, that Silar BKB he gets pushed. King J is probably going to bite the dust first. But look at that. Roshan going to get sneaked by How. He doesn't care about Clockwork dying. And who cares really about Clockwork dying? He's off lane, not really doing much. And he wants. He tries to. Ages. He tries to summon his inner bird, and he ignores the fights. He goes right back to mid. He wants to start pushing the lanes in, and LGD. I, I still feel they can take an anti mage late, but they've got to find a better fight where Silar can blow someone up off the bat. And Tangfu are doing a lot of things right to prevent that from happening. Not getting caught when they do get caught, having items like Ghost Scepter, having a BKB on your anti mage. There are a lot of heroes that are not guaranteed kills for the CK West. Still. If you get the timing right, you can kill this anti-mage. How is not immortal yet. Sure, he's got the Aegis of the Immortal, but that's that's just marketing fluff. He's not immortal by any means. It's really marketing fluff. Uh, I complete that, that was a nice one. But I don't think he will ever be immortal in this game, considering that CK is fat enough, no matter what really the big item has. I guess how we'll get close to it if he has a butterfly, which is I imagine the next item, and he could get a right about now, considering that he doesn't need to worry about buyback for, for the next uh, future. Yeah. Butterfly won't help you against Xiao Wei and his cleaves of death, and if he's hitting creeps, which I imagine he'll be trying to in these fights. So, we will see. I still think it's a very good choice for, I'm sure, you know, just you dealing with CK. You have to get against CK, right? Yeah. yeah. So. And the go other good yeah. news for Tongfu, they've gotten rid of most of these Radiant Wards. They're not dealing with constant vision all over their jungle. In fact, they feel safe to, to farm as well they should. So, credit to their supports for that, and... Moo gets close to a Scythe device. If he gets that off, then you can blow up the CK before he actually pops Phantasm or his BKB. They have the damage to do it, even with that heart. I mean, sure, he's at 3.2k health. Sure, he seems invincible. 
But he's really not if he gets scythed, if he gets lassoed, and he doesn't get his BKB off. Yeah, a big part of it is also increasing their, their possibility of killing that wisp early, taking away the movement speed, taking away the, the damage block uh, for that CK. So you can see that LGD looking for a very offensive smoke. They know that if they find one, CK Wisp is going to be right there. They have insane initiation power with that x -Tail. King J going to get initiated off, but this is probably the best person for the entire team to get initiated off, but it looks like BKB comes in. Shiny Strike's going to dive right from the get-go. Where's BKB Anti-Mage? He's in the middle fight trying to find a target. He wants to go on the Wisp, but Wisp is going to get back out in a very, very quick amount of time. That's three kills for nothing. Yeah, that's uh, the, he popped the phantasm there right away, and they're actually just gonna try to bring the tower down. Can they fight through the back door protection? Well, there's your glimpse. Trying to slow it down, but three heroes on the sidelines for 15 seconds, and oh, there's no back door protection at all. No creeps in the base. Who needs them? Tower's just gonna melt, and here comes your tether. They'll take the tower. They will be forced back by a buyback from Mu, but. LGD are going to be very happy with that, and this is where it's set it and forget it. You wait for the CK ult to cool down. Yes, yeah, wait 100 seconds, and then go right back. This time, you win a fight, you take Rex. And this is, that was a very, very key buyback. Puck was close to Cypher Vice before death. Now he has nothing. And, and, so, and they really got to make something happen now, as they smoke yeah. up. Well, again, relocates back down. Phantasm critically is down. So if you find a pick here, you might even get a tier 2, or at least a tier 1 up top. Disruption being used here. Oh, they find DD. Caught and inside caught. of the cogs. Now King J trying to do what damage he can. Ghost Scepter is there. Mu drops a beautiful coil catches quite a few. The orb comes through. Daedalus just picked up by Xiao Wei in the middle of the Chaos Silar with a BKB. He'll drop it now, but he's taking too much damage. He's on the run. Pal's on the hunt. Looks like he's going to go down. Relocate is being channeled, I believe. Is he going to get out? Oh. Oh, oh, sorry, no, am I insane? Gonna... Maybe it wasn't B-Channel. I thought it I... wasn't B-Channel. Uh, Power Shot's gonna cling him through. Kunkas on the run. He's got BKB. Sentry War being dropped down here. Anti Mage still full HP. He's doing a ton of work. Silo is low. Flame Breaks not gonna. Oh, the Surge for the Mono. Not gonna get the kill. Still gonna get the kill. Too fast. Wow. He go am I able to turn around? Silar's thinking about going back in. He's got that heart regen. He's getting a lot of HP. There's your Scythe. Where is Silar? There's a crit. Xiao 8 finds one. Didn't get off the X on how. How's driven away. The gem on the ground again inside of the fire inside of the flames. How does live? The butterfly made a huge difference in terms of his damage output there. I thought for a moment Silar was gonna turn around and blow that Aegis off of Hal's inventory, but not quite able to do it. And I really thought there would be a relocate there from the Wisp. I even thought I heard the sound effect, but didn't try to bring the CK back. Didn't try to bring herself back. Could have, I mean, completely turned the fight if they had gotten away. Yeah, uh, it, it somewhat is a low percentage move because there's so many stuns being th tossed out. Your relocate might be used, but, you know, again, it gets canceled. So how, again, I, I'm very uh, impressed by his big balls in that team fight. Just jumped straight in against the CK. Both heroes were BKB, nobody giving way, showing the power of that butterfly early. And he's up to another about 2,000 gold. Most likely will be saving for buyback because that Aegis of Immortal is going to be running out relatively soon. And here comes LGD. They want to push down a Rax. They really need to get a Rax. Uh, there's no tier 3 tower and they do have Phantasm up. And I think if you're Chongfu, you have to engage them outside of the base. It looks like they're getting ready to set up, getting ready to set up shop out here. This is very bold from Hal. Sure, he's got Aegis, but to be farming there when there's five heroes off the map, just about a top. That also takes some Kahone. Silar hasn't a completed Assault Caress now, so very good at breaking through. There is a Glyph. No, actually, sorry, there's not. Hal gets pulled in, stunned up. Now Chaos bolted, but not dead yet. They're all pulled into the wall. Hal's gonna melt. Aegis is down for the count. Silar's gonna work on that Rex, and oh, it's gonna melt. Okay, they stun Hal. BKB's available. Hasn't used it yet. He's trying to find some kills on the back lines, though. It's CK Wisp, execution style. Picking him off. Well, actually, make it just CK, because Wisp is done, and Silar's on the run. Shall we, too? Trying to get out of here. And now Silar, with how driving him back, I don't know if he gets away here. This anti mage will be able to bring him down fairly quickly. They just need a shackle, and they're going to kill Silar. And it's once again one of those games where the team with the anti mage just seems to pull ahead in the mid game, but they've lost the game in the what? end. What an what illusion. If this room, Silar's going to blink away, but. To be honest, they could have completely easily destroyed that Rax. Poor Migro from Silar, as well as the Darkseer player. They had a whole bunch of illusions being created, and they were just chasing like the anti mage when he was blinking around randomly. You stick all your illusions on that Rax, you get yourself a melee Rax. And this game, I mean, who knows how this game goes Radiance now if they have a Rax. Now, anti mage goes up top, gets a tier 1 tower. Radiance LG tower dropping the ball a little bit here and there, but to their credit, they still saved the Kunga, they still saved the Chaos Knight. 
And they could go back once again, but Glyph should be back on in the next team fight up top, so... Top tower is under the main thing for me is just the Tongfu's getting better fights. I still think LGD should be able to take the fights if they find the right openings, even with the 5 second BKB and Chaos Knight. Wisp is just dying in a hurry in these fights, and... It's where you really don't want the Chaos Knight Wisp to go in first, because DDC is pretty damn squishy for a Wisp at 50 minutes in. Are we really already 50 minutes in again? This is going to be yet another hour-long game at the rate we're headed. What a what just what a ridiculous series, man. So he's got four skills. He he doesn't feel that weak, but he gets focused so hard. Yeah, so. he really he dies so fast to an anti mage with a butterfly. You eat the mana void after two rounds of auto attacks from Manta Illusions and the hero, and you're dead from pulling out the end. I don't know, Lumi. It's just another one of those games where it really is completely open who's going to take it. Yeah, and to me, how quickly move farms this Hex is going to be the X factor because now it gives Tongfu a way to initiate whether it's going to be against a CK or Wisp. I think Wisp still is the kind of the more killable target. He is an important target, and honestly, you're not going to kill Silar from 100% health to zero. So Wisp is the easiest target, or Darkster, maybe it's a duo pro target as well. How working on the bot lane. And as soon as uh, Pug finds that uh, finds that hex, Radiance they should be looking to attack. look for a pickoff here and there. By the way, Hao has 6,000 gold. And well, we've seen this movie before, the six slotted anti-mage. The past two games today, he's gone on to lose. Not Hal, but the anti-mage player. Is that gonna happen here? Radiance no, certainly could. Hard to say who has the, the convincing advantage in terms of gold. Only a 6,000 gold lead for the Radiant. And we're gonna see, oh, a blink onto the high ground by Mu, who gets X and then torrented for his trouble. The hook ain't gonna connect by King J. Now a lasso, blink in. They look to go, but here comes the relocate on the back lines. Brings down Mu. They want more. The gem's dead. The BKB charge is being wasted. It looks like Yao actually got flame break up onto the, oh onto the high God. ground. Oh my goodness. Look at this Chaos Knight damage. Xiao 8 with a big crit on top of it. And now a buyback from our anti mage. Oh God, that's Jesus. gonna hurt. This combo of the, it's just insta-kills from full HP to nothing. Speaking of insta-kills. I wouldn't call it a combo when he just relocate, or reality rip, but it sure seemed like one. Now cause... Silar gets oh, coiled, and now gonna be bashed by a Manta-style anti-mage, and I don't know, they're waiting for a cleave. They don't get the crit they were hoping for, and how will escape. Yeah, I think they were gonna try to burst through with the Rax right now. Every single cleave coming out from Kunkka, you just kind of hope, please don't crit, please don't crit. Kunkka winning one game already so far. Looking to, you know, say that, hey, guys, don't forget about me. I could sort of carry sometimes. This is a different level of Kunkka. This one has way more farm and way more impact. And just had a stronger start, has had an easier time dealing with the Tongfu lineup. And Is he going double deals? Or is he, is he going to the next level? Well... There's a butterfly on how I guess. I, I mean, it could be a divine. It could be a an MKB. There's Maybe, just yeah. there's really no point in getting an MKB because you just you hit a creep or another hero, and the evasion for the anti mage isn't relevant. He's actually dropped his demon edge. He'll pick it back up. He buys a salve. Shall it? Efficient as ever. Wants to get right back out because Roche is under siege. Unfortunately, Roche is going to die too fast. That's going to go the way of Tong Fu, and this is big. They really need this Roche. Yeah, do you give it to your anti mage? You got it, because yeah. he used buyback. So if he dies, you're in a lot of trouble, and he'll pick it up now. Okay. Also, the one th big thing to continuously point out is that Mu has not been surviving these team fights, which is something that you don't expect out of a Puck. Puck generally is the most survival. Either his team entirely dies, but still with phase with us, uh, Blink, and uh, or but he gets out alive. He hasn't been because those trucks of illusions just crit you, and you're dead. So he's never getting that scythe, it feels like. If you're LGD, I wonder if you just wait out this Aegis as well. It seems like it's going to be hard to push. Mm, it's... I don't think that's a game-winning move, but maybe that's a, they're going to be forced into that one. Cause... It may not be a, a move that wins the game, but I feel it's a move that is a lot less likely to lose the game flat out. And sure. LGD is normally now... known for being a safe team. They're pushing up the hill against Aegis that you think they should wait out, and... There's also Glyph available, and that's kind of the big thing. Yeah, they're going to wait for the next creep wave. Remember, they do have relocate, so they can actually just send uh, a, a flank, basically, from the Wisp CK if they'd like. We'll see if it actually comes to that, and if it does, if it actually works. But for the time being, they're content to just hit on the creeps and just push the lanes back in. A very passive stage to this game. 50 kills total. 34 for LGD, 16 for Tang Fu. They're looking for an opening. Here comes your CK Wisp. 
Are they gonna go for the racks? They're just gonna back off. Very, Illusions by themselves are defending, yeah. Very the deliberate. Creep, the creep wave are pushing out on the mid and bot lane respectively. And I just want to, again, I don't want to point out LG's mistake uh, one more time, but gonna do it anyways. I just want to remind that this Rax, this melee Rax, should be dead already if the micro of Silar Solution as well as Dark Sailor Solution was on point. But instead, they're slowly sieging this one, and they might lose a fight here. We'll see. Silar dropped black by the f back by the flame break. Not gonna go in the Rax just yet. They're for afraid, Lumi. It's pretty clear. Now Shackle's gonna latch him, shall we? He gets lasso back, but disrupted mid lasso. The hook comes through from King J. Catches DD. Now Chaos Knight. Where's the Phantasm? There you go. Drops it and unloads. How's gonna drop? How? Won't go down. Blinks away with barely any life, but now Puck to fall. Could they go for the Rex? No, they want the kills. Now they go back. They've wasted a few seconds. I don't think it's too long. Oh, they're gonna even gonna disrupt. The clockwork, again, I think it's like you said, just go for the Rex. Who even cares about yeah. the clockwork? They'll take it, and now they want to back off. I'm not too sure whether this is the right choice, whether he should suicide or anti mage. I mean, sure, he go back to the base and heal up and, and retains his Aegis, but your Rex is dead. Maybe you just die right there, get an instant respawn, and fight. But again, you're, you're going to be down a lot of heroes, so maybe you don't win that fight anyway, so it's hard to say. Shao has gone for an MKB, which again, I mean, I think it's kind of odd when you just can hit creeps, but it gives you a reliable way to focus the anti mage instead of having to hit a creep, another hero, or an illusion uh, to avoid uh, the chance to miss. So we'll see where they go from here for the time being. Well, not the anti mage's illusions, because those obviously get the evasion. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uh, for the time being, I, I guess the question is, with Roche coming up in... I don't know, six minutes or so, but more importantly, the age is ending in a few. Does LGD just slow roll from here? Do they wait for the next Roche? Do they try and just siege, use Phantasm to chip away the Rex? Do they get more aggressive with re with Relocate? What's the game plan for LGD? I, I think the two games so far has shown that down one or two Rex doesn't really matter. Um, what it really only matters is if you get caught out. And having this Aegis for now means they get some reassurance. Um, and of course, maybe anti mage can farm up some big item. Also, these two games so far is that anti mage will get six slotted easily and he will draw the game out long enough, but he won't win because there is he's never really the hardest carry. It looks like we're gonna see a little bit of crits, no, no crit off of it. How is gonna maybe be forced to pop a BKB charge? He, he gets hexed, he, gets, he doesn't get it off. Now he's backing back in, he could go down, he will. That's your Aegis on the deck, and here comes those tether stun. As soon as he respawns, he's gonna be tether stun. No, he gets the BKB out because the tether ended at exactly that moment. Could have been his death otherwise, but blinks away. King J will pay. However, he's pulled back in. He's brought down. That's an Aegis down. That's a BKB down for the Anti-Mage. And that means it's go time for LGD. And they're even going to relocate forward. They want Sang Chain. They should find him. There's Reality Rift canceled. Out of range. They're wasting a lot of time. They could be trying to break the base. They're hunting kills. They want Sang Chain. They want How. How will blink away. Sang Chain does go down. Oh boy, two ships crossing in the night. Yao's gonna hex up how? Where's the follow-up? It comes now. They actually drop back because the relocate ends and they're gonna find him. They're gonna kill him. He'll buy back immediately, but this could be it. If they lose this fight, LGD, well, if Tongfu loses this fight, LGD gonna take the Rax and with it the game. There's no glyph. They work on the tier three now. Rax number two could be falling just about any second. That's a lot of stinking illusions. Two lanes of Rax down. Lumi, is this the end for Tong Fu? This is the end. Look at how easy those Rex fall. As soon as you focus on CK Illusion, it is. They're like paper being made out of. And yeah, they don't care that Anti Mage is alive. Anti Mage pops the BKB, blinks back in, trying to fight. He's gonna get a kill on DDC. Maybe. No, purge on Anti Mage. The boat comes through, and Silar is just crit for hundreds and hundreds. Mega creeps already up. The game's over. The game is over. Well, it's the, the kills aren't over, though. That's what LGD want a few more of. They're going to hunt a couple extra Sang Shang. Where's that Xiao A crit? Boom, Shaka Laka, Tan Fu. I mean, you got to give them a lot of credit for the resilience they've shown today. But in the end, LGD outlasted them. And I feel for LGD, this is such a big win, not just for the Dota 2 Super League, but it bodes well for them entering a stacked International 3 Eastern qualifiers. Vici Gaming looking pretty good, took down LGD earlier in the Dota 2 Super League about four or five days ago. Obviously, Rattlesnake is a strong contender, Rising Stars, not a team to be underestimated. And then, all your Southeast Asian Dark Horses, LGD, they gotta play more like this. And oh, by the way, Lumi, shall we? has notched another 17 kills on his Kanka again. Sing Sing, are you watching this? I mean, I gotta say, with his girlfriend watching, 
Putting on a show, man. That's Putting a, on a show. that's yeah. the way to do it. Well, guys, thank you all for tuning in. It's been a long night. We have a lot of work to do to get ready for the International 3 Eastern Qualifiers, but forget about them for at least another day or two because the Western Qualifiers are going on. Be sure to head on over right now to twitch.tv slash the GD Studio or twitch.tv slash Toby Dota. The Western Qualifiers are underway. As for us, it's a wrap. LGD, they're going to take a win here. Tong Fu, their first match in the Dota 2 Super League. They drop it in a almost heartbreaking fashion one to two we're done for today i'm ld beyond the summit he's luminous lumi it's been a long and grueling cast but some fantastic games put on by these two teams today good old chinese games going in an hour i love it thanks for having me i enjoy these casts very thoroughly yeah thank you all for having us as your casters hope you guys enjoyed the games if you did enjoy our casting be sure to follow us twitter.com slash ld dota for me and then twitter.com slash luminous inverse for him but it's a wrap guys we're all finished for today go watch the western qualifiers or go get some sun whatever you'd like to do but you really should watch the western qualifiers we're done for now we'll see See you later. This is LD and Luminous signing off.